coming up, we have another great discussion um, from just the math to this notion of rough consensus. Open source technology projects rely on a range of beliefs about consensus, agreement, trust, and how to obtain it. So let's talk about the social consensus that many people claim is embedded in cryptocurrency systems. Uh, welcome to our guests, Sunny Agrawal, co-founder of Sika and a Cosmos core developer, and Maria Paula, known to friends as MP, who works on the ETH Berlin events uh, with the collective known as the Department of Decentralization. Welcome both. Hello. Thanks for having us on. Now, perhaps um, the first question uh, I, I, I will go to MP here. Um, MP, uh, you know, you've been involved in sort of community building in, in the Ethereum world uh, for a number of years now. Um, how do you go about building social consensus, consensus over a fractious issue, uh, like a hard fork or a new client or a testnet? Oh, wow. <laughs> nice question to start with. Huh? Um, Honestly, in a platform like Ethereum, obviously, uh, there's no set governance. Everyone knows that. And but it is indeed about social consensus. How do you go about building it? Then, uh, well, I guess you don't. Uh, I guess, you know, decisions are made in a like sort of like noise to build ratio right now. And you know, you can argue with this notion that uh, in Ethereum, and I, I think I heard it uh, yesterday from Gavin Wood, uh, he says that uh, he, he claimed that it too has, uh, Ethereum has no agency to build it too, therefore it's very hard to build it. I don't think that it is like that. I think it's far more nuanced. I think that people in Ethereum have had historically the capacity to organize and uh, align incentives and work towards a common goal. It might be from different directions, but I think uh, that it's possible to achieve the social consensus once you're past all the noise. We have seen several times so many problems and, uh, you know, sort of discussions, uh, you know, from fund recovery to proc power right now, uh, which I'm not going to touch. Uh, you know, there's always the sense in Ethereum that you don't reach a definite decision. And actually, the consensus is there. Uh, you know, the thing is that the people dissenting with it also make a lot of noise. So the the external optics might seem as if we can't make a decision, but basically the decisions are there. Hope that so explains. As a as a quick follow up, though, you know, as a practitioner of community building, what's your focus? Is your focus on finding agreement, or is your focus on um, sort of reducing disagreement or managing disagreement? Managing disagreement, that definitely. Uh, you know, um, uh, I believe that a healthy community needs contrarian voices and needs loud contrarian voices as well. We need to give platform to contrarianism as well and to constructive criticism. So uh, the moment that we drown these voices, the moment that we become a less creative platform and by default, uh, the whole system uh, goes to hell. So, you know, my focus is actually to create a healthy discussion environment, uh, to give voices to a lot of people, to uh, also, co you know, uh, also generate some kind of um, sort of uh, not fun, uh, because sometimes discussions are not fun, but uh, some sort of dynamic discussion environment. So this is what I focus on. I, when, when you're building a movement or a hackathon or an organization as we're building here in Berlin, we're building it towards a, a common goal and the common goal like can be easily the development or the protection 
of a next platform or the protection of open source developers or in our latest case, you know, the building of the Gurdy testnet. We decided to help uh, build the Gurdy testnet in uh, and what does this mean? It means that we're able to moderate discussions, we're able to solve conflicts, we're able to push the incentivization of people and promote as well what they're building. So, uh, yeah, it's manifold, actually. Sunny, a question for you here, kind of following up on that. Now, Jameson Lopp has said that the point of social consensus, or he calls it meat space consensus, um, is to continuously answer the question, what is Bitcoin? You know, is it eCash? Is it a cheap payments network? Is it a store of value? Um, but if there are so many competing visions of Bitcoin, and, and I would add that it seems like there are so many other competing visions of different networks like Ethereum and, you know, I'm sure potentially Cosmos even, um, so if there are all of these visions, is social consensus even real? Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, like you said, it think the narratives change over time and this is sort of expected. And, you know, I, I, I tweeted about uh, this chart I found from Nick Carter a couple, he made it like, I think maybe two years ago, but it was actually this chart showing the like relative uh, mind share of different people. Uh, Bitcoin narratives over time. And what's cool about this is that like, you know, that's not like, you know, at any given moment, there's not like any one narrative that's like, okay, this was the era of, you know, uh, dark market market money. Then this was the era of digital gold. Now this is the era of e-cash. It was like, you know, all of these things are sort of in parallel and are uh, competing for mind share in, in, in some ways. And, and some of them are somewhat, you know, uh, competing and some of them might be collaborative, right? Like, you know, the, you know, one of them that he had in that chart was digital gold and another one was the reserve currency for, uh, DeFi. And, you know, it could be, it, those two seem to be more, um, complementary systems while maybe something like, uh, e-cash versus, uh, digital gold, maybe more, competitory because they like have different design requirements from the base system. And so, um, yeah, the social consensus is just something that, you know, happens. It happens on Twitter. It happens on meet space. I, uh, it happens in conferences. It happens, you know, it, it's a very, you know, it's a gossip network essentially, but you know, human gossip, humans gossiping about what they're interested in and, you know, people coming on stage and telling what they, what they think. Yeah, I mean, so something like Bitcoin Cash arguably shows the limits of social consensus. You know, you have a break over whether something is e-cash or whether something is a store of value. Um, you know, what what was the breaking point there and, and why do you think the Bitcoin community wasn't able to reach social consensus? Um, yeah, so I've talked with uh, Amari about this before and, you know, he felt that it came to, he felt that uh the bitcoin community kind of it came to this point where there people were willing like compromise was no longer an option on the table uh and to him he for anyone who's not aware amari is the lead developer of bitcoin abc which is sort of the main bitcoin cash client um and so he kind of felt that with uh, UASF, the user activated soft fork, that was sort of a, you know, he kind of knew that he thought that all actors weren't acting in good faith and that, you know, they were kind of using Segwit2x as this thing that they were, that he predicted that the people would go back on later. Um, so I think the splitting point happens is when people, you know, are unwilling to compromise and was sort of when I ideology overtakes compromise. And this happened with Ethereum and Ethereum classic as well, where, you know, people just had two fundamentally different viewpoints that were like impossible to coexist. And that happened in the real world too, but in the real world that usually takes the form of like civil wars, which is actually really nice in blockchain systems. We don't have physical civil wars. We have this chain split. Maybe some people 
you know, it's a little bit messy for a little bit, but both chains can run in parallel and, you know, compete in the marketplace rather than in the battlefield. I want to throw this uh, question out uh, to, to the both of you. Um, you know, when, when we're in these sort of community um, conflicts uh, or disagreements, uh, it seems sometimes impossible, right, for, for consensus to ever be found. Uh, and yet, if we think about the way the internet uh, was developed, right, famously, the IETF relies on this mechanism of rough consensus to decide uh, what goes into uh, the protocol. So I guess my question to you guys is, what's the difference between rough consensus and uh, the type of consensus that we are trying to achieve with cryptocurrency networks? And that's open to, to either of you. Mm, I would say that the, what well, in the, like, you know, obviously I wasn't there, so I don't know. Uh, but I would say that the development of the internet was way less political. Um, the rough consensus that they were trying to come to consensus on was technical design. I think everyone sort of had this general agreement of the goal and there were actually you know there were entities who were disagreeing with that you know like you know you had um you know different companies working on sort of like completely different things than the internet they were working on like you know central centralized communication networks but those kind of fell off and they weren't really what we call the internet and when we say you know rough consensus uh in creating the internet, that was basically a amongst a bunch of people who had agreed and shared political, like, you know, vision. And then they were coming to consensus on the architectural design. And you could see this kind of, you know, I, gu I guess the parallel in the blockchain system would be that rough consensus is like similar to the different core development teams on Ethereum coming to rough consensus on uh, product roadmap and technical roadmap, not really the same as the rough consensus between Ethereum supporters versus Ethereum Classic supporters. That's not the sort of same rough consensus. Also, I think that we are not taking into consideration that obviously when uh, the internet started, the participants to achieve rough consensus were fairly less than the participants taking to achieve rough consensus now. Uh, some people think that uh, this is a matter of, uh, you know, the core developers reaching co uh, rough consensus, which I personally believe is correct. And then some people say that everyone that's a significant stakeholder for a reason or another, let's say, you know, they allocate a lot of their time into, you know, promoting Ethereum or into building Ethereum uh, without being uh, core devs are also, uh, should also take part of uh, the rough consensus. So uh, honestly, right now with so many participants and the lack of definition on which participants should actually take part of the of decision making, it's very, very hard to determine uh, consensus. And as a follow-up to that, Maria Paula, are there particular groups that you would like to see more involved in social consensus? Um, yes, definitely. So, uh, you know, I, I do like, in a way, the key, the neutral or it, the neutral people on Ethereum, the community builders uh, on Ethereum tend to uh, be more uh, pacific than those that are, uh, well, pacific is not the right way, uh, the right word, we're all pretty much specific here. Uh, you know, people that are trying to make people agree with each other in a way or another, I would like to see more of these sort of like <laughs> lobbyists between both parties in order to uh, reach a more, you know, aligned mess common message instead of, you know, this uh, Twitter noise everywhere. I would like to see people that are able to communicate clearly what the community wants from both sides 
you know, okay. but it has to be a group, you know, it has to be an yeah. advocacy group. I think that's the ones that made a brilliant job on trying to do this were the theorem magicians. Uh, and th then for one reason or another, uh, you know, they're not as active, but this was a really good start, actually. I'm going to have to cut you off there. I'm so sorry. We are out of time, but thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you.